All right, everybody. We are on the Chronicles Dang. of a Black Sheep tonight. And we are talking about Derek, Derek Jackson and the other male relationship gurus. So tonight we have Honey Daniels on the line. We have Anthony Dunaway and we have Duriel Randolph. So uh, who wants to open up tonight? We'll let Duriel because he got some he got some good intros. Cause yeah, he he ready to he ready to mm -mm, he like hearing that burning up stuff. We're gonna see the fire department come. Oh no, no, I had to check on it because it got my house smelling good. So um y'all want me to start? So yeah, my question yeah, you is was, you was voted. <laughs> so check it out. So my stance when it comes to Dexter Jackson is this. He is just a person. An opportunist who took advantage of individuals at a certain time. Now they mad because they butt hurt because they believe in a fairy tale. I shouldn't even say fairy tale. They believe what he was saying. And right now they're mad because of his dirt. They mad because they that he that they mad because they believe the dream that they were being sold. That's why they mad. That's, all, that's the case. Then who they should really be mad at? Not him. They should be mad at yeah. Facts. I agree. And then, and then truthfully, um, uh, I can't trust a man who smacks every fucking day. <laughs> that's just me. I, I really can't. I haven't really seen his videos to, to be a, able I to comment on it. it to me. I had a couple friends send it to me. I'm like, damn, dog, you you must eat something good because you smacking hard. <laughs> but again, it's like I got so many thoughts on that. And when it comes to that, I don't want to monopolize everything. Plus my food cooking, so I'll be back. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so again, like I said before, I feel like his audience. I think he capitalized on his audience. And like Dario was saying, he's an opportunist. He knew when you go on social media, you see women all day long posting about they man this, they in this type of relationship, they butt hurt, but they still follow their same formula when it comes to dating men. Whether it's worth or not, and clearly it's not worth. So here comes this man who is in appearance an attractive chocolate, because you know bitches like chocolate. You know, nice looking man, black man, married to a black woman, and he is basically telling them everything they want to hear. But people did not know that Derek Jackson was married until this came out. That's true. That's true. Because he, because was he never was ring. Out there as he was single, but giving game to the other single women so they could stop being played. You're right. So people didn't know he You're was right. married till recently. You're right. You're right. You're right. They yeah. did not know that. But yeah. he appealed to a particular type of audience is what I'm trying to say. Because you can't take a female that's, you know, first of all, if they're single by choice, if they have high standards, if they're not willing to settle, um, certain type of females have high standards. And regardless of what Derrick Jackson was saying, they would have took it with a grain of salt. I don't think they would have, you know, a believed every single word out of his mouth and held on to it and latched on and say, okay, I need this. And then fast forward, be butt hurt when he turned around not to be the person that they thought he was. You know, a, a, a strong-minded you know, female would have taken what he said with a grain of salt again, but wouldn't be in their feelings because, oh, he lied, he doing this, he didn't say all this stuff, and he ain't who he said he was. I'm sure a different type of camera woman peeped name a long time ago. They may have saw his videos, said, okay, he got a point or two, but why, but why, why did, again, why does he have so much knowledge and why does he phrase things the way he do? Why does he use the analogies the way he, you know, uh, that he used? And I'm just basing off the little excerpts of videos that I've seen. Cause again, I don't follow him. I didn't know who this man was. Um, prior to this, this incident coming out again, I don't follow uh, people with, uh, especially men, uh, with, uh, Relationship advice. So I didn't know who he was, but just based on what I saw, 
That's what I gathered from it. Okay. He just capitalized. He's an opportunist. And he put he took poor um advantage of of women in a certain mental state, I think. Hmm. Okay. And then, um, okay, so look look at this. You single. Yes, you I single. am. Yes, okay. I am. I'm single as hell. You seen his videos. Mm-hmm. And what was your thought? Because you didn't fall into that bucket. You didn't fall into that pocket. Okay, and so you ain't out here butt hurt because he ain't who no. you know he was. No, I'm not. I'm I'm kind of amused, but I'm not very butt hurt. So this is my thing with Derek Jackson. Probably in the beginning, I would you know if it came down my timeline, I may listen or hear what he got, what he have to say. But mm-hmm. I didn't jump on that train. You know that that um what they would say, you smell that, you could smell what Derek was cooking, like real talk. At the same time, one of the things that turned me off about Derek Jackson was the way that they always talk about he uplifts women. But there was an email, a messenger actually to be exact, that he went in on this female. He called this chick everything but a child of God. And she posted it. And I'm like, wow, how are you uplifting women? But you just ate this chick. I mean, you just ate this chick for lunch and dinner. Like, you just straight dogged her. Um, That was a turnoff for me. So, like, you know, it wasn't no more Derek Jackson. I didn't see him come down my timeline anymore. You know, I would see maybe, like, the he was selling a book. Or I think he came out with a game. But... There are some things where you can smell shit before it get to you, and he was mm-hmm. that shit. Like, you can peep game when somebody trying to sell you something. You know, like they used to come around back in the day, what was it, the Kirby vacuum cleaners? And that damn vacuum cleaner was, what, about yeah. $2,000? Yeah, you can mm-hmm. kind of smell stuff and when people run in game. Granted, yeah. I do agree with you as well as Durio that, you know, he, he, he hit the side of the weakness where women are. You know, as far as dating and dating now and these dudes, because woo, the dudes. This is what, you know, I, I don't want this to be like a, a teardown se- uh, segment about him, because let me tell you what I liked about him. Now, again, before this hit, I didn't know who this man was. So after the fact, I went and watched um, excerpts, and I'm going to say that because I've never watched the whole video. But what I liked about him, and probably other men will do the same thing, is that <laughs> he was very smart. He was very manipulative when it came to what he said and how he said it. Because I date women, I know exactly how women are. We are very emotional creatures, and we play mm-hmm. on words. If you give us just enough, We'll take it and we'll hold on to that. If you tell us what we want to hear, when I say us, I don't mean me. I just mean females. Um, if you tell us what we want to hear, we're going to take that and we're going to hold on to it. He basically took what he know women wanted to hear and gave them, he just put that shit on the platform. And he monopolized on it. He capitalized on it. That's a, you know, that's he, the same. He and I'm mad that he was able to do it and make money because I ain't made no damn money. <laughs> really? I they want to hear all the time. What'd you say? Same shit Steve Harvey did. That's the same shit uh, all the folks before him did. Like, right. it's not, right. and that's a that's the crazy part about it. It's not like it's a, damn, that shit blew up. It's not like it's a um, something new. Right. That's the thing. Like the, the method of what he did is nothing new. I mean, but he wrapped it differently. He wrapped it differently. Again, Steve Harvey did the same thing. He put it in the book. He, he did. Steve Harvey did. He Steve Harvey did it uh, a different way. The same way, but different because he already had that platform. So That's what I'm saying. He didn't have, so yeah, he's he been out there for a long time, and it has. He just Derek Jackson wrapped up the same thing. Um, Steve Harvey and everybody before him has done. Steve Harvey put it in the book. 
and he made it, and, and then Derek Jackson came through, and he put it in his appearance and his words, you know, verbalized it. I think he later well, on, I see, I see how he did it. He did it because he looked. He was a plain ordinary individual. They looked at him like a plain ordinary individual versus right. versus Steve Harvey and the rest of them, Doctor Ruth and all that. I mean, old for him. but uh, all their folks. So, but I. If that's his hustle, that's his hustle. But my, my thing right. is <laughs> keyword hustle. Right, he hustled the shit out of his a hustle, a, a definite and, hustle. But, mm -hmm. My thing, don't be. You can't be one side, especially when it comes to relationship. You cannot be one side. Ah. You cannot be. He. He was uh, one sided because he downplayed the, the men his entire every video. Well, the ones that I saw, like I only saw like three, but he always oh. dogged the men out and said, You know, you don't need to deal with this type of brother, you don't need to do with this. If he's doing this, he this type of brother. He always seemed to be very negative when it came to the male perspective or what they did, rather. And that's why I could appreciate Kevin Samuel because his ass is an equal opportunity. He talk. He talk about. He talk to men bad. He talk to women bad. He tell them just like it is. It don't matter if you gay. Straight, I don't think black, he tell it just like it is. That is his personal opinion. I heard him tell this female okay. because she was she was five eight, and yep. I think she wore. I'm not sure what size she wore, but she said she broke the rule because visually she's not what men want to see. No, visually yeah. that's not what the fuck he want to see. Cause I already think this nigga looks he you know we family. I already think he both both ways any motherfucking way. What's that so, up, man? Okay, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Oh, check this out. She says she she broke the mold for what men want to see, right? Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Which man? Exactly, oh. but he's speaking about all men. He not he's not. But see, no, 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 no. no, He's not. He's speaking on particular men because I've listened and I did this on purpose. I listened. I was, when I first heard him, I was like, okay, he's spitting like he kind of he's kind of asshole. Then I went back and listened to a lot, like majority of the shit he's saying. What he's saying aligns with what they're asking. Like one of. Uh, this is an example. A chick, a female came on. A woman came on there. She was, she made six figures, um, had two kids, and she wanted a man to make six figures. And he asked her three questions, and it's the same question that men ask ask ourselves when we see a female like that. Okay. Okay. How how does she look? Uh huh. I should let me rephrase that. Man, who on that caliber that she's looking for? Okay. Well, you can get a hood dude that don't give a damn how you look, but long as you bring home six figures, he's straight because he's gonna sit down, fuck you, uh, eat, eat okay. up your food, eat up your kids, um, snacks and shit, and chill. But if a man brings something to the table, then he asks, How does she look? For mm -hmm. one, when he asked her that, she said she was a seven when she had makeup on. But she's a five without makeup. And he said, You okay, can't. What are the other questions? Huh? What are the other That's questions? The, first, the second question What does she bring to the table outside of sex and money? She couldn't answer that. She could okay. not answer that. Outside, outside of her looks, she couldn't answer it. Then he said, The third question is Do you know the statistics of the type of person that you're looking for? She couldn't answer that either. And that's when he broke it down. Like statistically, the guys that you're looking for are not looking for you. And what made me, what made that one stick to me, I went and looked, and I started looking at like my homeboys that were professional athletes. If they didn't have a girl before they went to the league or became professional or became six figure folk, nah, they weren't looking at the type of female she looked like. And that's the part that I'm like, I I agree with him. Okay. And he's just saying that a lot of women are looking at above above their pay grade. Now, I'm not saying you have a potential. No. And he's mm -hmm. not saying that you don't have potential. But 
But what you're looking for, you have to work up to that. And these guys, and you see it every day. You see it every every day. You turn on the TV. Do you see a, a multi-millionaire? Hell, I ain't even want a multi-millionaire. Somebody in the top, the upper class with a mud dog. Do you see somebody in the upper class with a mud dog? No. Okay, pause. An ugly man, I don't give a fuck how much money he make, can always get a nice looking woman. Always. Yeah. Reverse that. An ugly ass female, you will never see an ugly ass of what, of what the world view as an unattractive female with a, with a nice looking man. That's just That's not how I just our society said. is. That's what That's I just not said. how our society is. But no, you were saying about what she was looking for. I think it was kind of yeah. like apples and oranges. It, it may have some... That's the same thing. If she looking for a diamond, she look like a, a dud. How the fuck she gonna get that dude? That's exactly but what I said. I, I thought, okay, but, but that's what but she was you, looking for. Okay, so, but okay, with, with that being said, you have to know your number, okay. And, and like you said, she can bring shit up to the table, or at least she couldn't on the spot tell him what she brought to the table. Then I feel like if you can't do it on the spot, then goddamn it. You don't know. Cause that should be ingrained in you. I bet. T, what you bring to the table? Look, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I tried, I tried them looks. What you bring to the table? Time. And and I think everybody is different because that will be something yeah. that somebody always hollering. What you bring, what you bring to the table, what you bring to the table. I believe that everybody's table is different. Everybody that's, don't yeah, want the same is. thing that everybody wants. So a guy may want may want a woman with six figures, and it may be a guy that say, well, "I want a I want a wife that can cook, clean my house, and take care of my kids." It depends on what that person wants at their table. Because you can bring some shit at the table and think that person gonna eat it. Bring a whole turkey meal, some dressing. They be like, "Oh, I'm vegetarian. I don't eat that." So uh, what you, you bring like, to the table might again. not be what they want to eat. So it depends what that person likes. Okay, so okay, pause that T. So the woman was a five, okay, and she wanted she wanted a man that was what? A eight, a ten? She wanted no, a nice looking man. She wanted a nice looking man. She said she wants somebody who was six foot making six figures. Okay, that's not impossible. But what hey, does what not. does he look like? Oh, what does five? he look like? But but I see, she I see nice five. looking white men. Oh, what, what you say? I see, I see nice looking yeah. white men with um with fives in any in any nationality. Hey, you want to know why? So six like, foot. If we gonna go down that road, we gonna, we gonna go down there. Down there. Six six gonna go down there. I was gonna go there. My all, the only thing I'm trying to say is yeah. six feet with six figures is not impossible. It's not. No, it. it's not. That can no be no matter what, hey, what else. Like. What else she said? She that could be. That could be a five to Kevin, but to the guy that likes that what he likes, that could be a whole team. Like I said, I show I gave you my example. Okay, so what else you want? I have yet to see somebody in the upper middle class, upper to upper middle class to lower what ten percent population have a mud dog. Have somebody that's not. I'm not even gonna say a five. I have yet to see one that has six, seven, or eight. So, like, so that right there is saying that's telling that's you that. That's saying that, that, that women like money, and she don't give a fuck what this nigga look like as long as they got money. That's exactly what that's saying. Yeah, men do the same thing. Men ain't finna... A man, I don't give a damn what you say. If you don't look good on his motherfucking arm, he is not finna fuck with you. Or he, or he, might, call that. You. Or he might call you at damn... At four o'clock in the morning, after he done left the club with his homeboys and whatnot, come over and get his get his rocks off, and then say, "I'll hit you up later." Wow! So basically, you are saying unattractive women basically are the the four o'clock after club booty calls. Have a man. That's exactly what he's saying. Damn. Damn. Okay, so let's go back to let's go back to what else she what else she wanted, and he said that you're, that's unrealistic to her. So she wanted six feet, six figures. What else she said she wanted? I know she said she was a five without makeup. I just want females when they go onto his shoulder when they talk about and he and they know when they go talk to him. 
he gonna put them on the spot and ask them some questions. If you a five, stay in your face bracket. You can't be a five and want a fucking eight. That that's the whole okay. man, thank you. That's the whole point I'm saying. That's my whole point. Like you can't <laughs> you can't get mad at him for saying you can't jump. You can't jump. Like this ain't goddamn checkers. You can't jump over people. If you're a five. Okay, so in that incident, he did make a good point. And that's that's my whole point. But he don't, delivery, he don't always yeah, he's an asshole. His delivery, yeah, he's an asshole. I mean he don't always I don't think he always yeah, be the truth though. I don't think yeah, but, I don't think he always be true. I don't, I don't care about his delivery. No, I mean that that no. says nothing. I'm talking about the content. I'm talking about his content. He don't he's not always um speaking facts. I think he is giving more so opinion in a lot of the things. Now that scenario that you said, it kind of made sense. But in a lot of his videos, he's not like that. You know, his delivery is what it is. I can't knock this man because he's an asshole. Whether he you know, and, and you know, and that's what I'm about to say. And, and then you, and I guess I'm different because I don't look at. I take his shit for like entertainment, but I listen to some of it. Like if something pops out, mm -hmm. uh, then I'm like, okay, it makes sense. He did well, a segment where he talked to this guy, and this guy yeah. wanted him a nice looking chick, whatever. He talked about his ass being, um, you know, short. Sure, he was fat. under six feet. Yeah, but he was fat. He was working a mediocre job. I'm talking like Walmart or somewhere like that. He didn't bring anything to the motherfucking table. And then he had a little dick. Ooh. He was like, yeah. and he was just, because he, he asked him. I saw that one too. He said, yeah, he's the guy with like, the the average. Average. Here's the thing though. Here's the funny part though. Here's the part that I find so funny. The I little say like, like huh? mm, maybe five, five maybe ten years ago. Maybe five, ten years ago, a woman was saying that exact same shit. And y'all was like, preacher girl, talk. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. If he ain't this, if he ain't that, well, yada yada yada. yada. No, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm just saying the female women was saying that shit. I'm just like, now all of a sudden a man is saying that shit. It's a problem. You know what I'm saying? I like, said it was a problem. I, I now, this is a problem. This is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I just, the only thing that I dislike about Kevin Samuels, and it's not his delivery, it's not that he gets on there and talks about what he talks about, it's that a lot of the things that he say or are his just his opinion it does not you know correlate to the to the to the masses to the entire population you know we always say well popular opinion says this that's exactly what it is his personal opinion it's not really you know what the world sees or what the world views they don't view view it the same way he does he's basically just getting on there giving his opinion and people get mad at him for his opinion that's what everybody do. That's everybody, everybody, unless it's backed by science and yeah. research with some, with some of his stuff is back has been backed by science and research and numbers. It's an opinion. Okay, so that's the only thing that you know I kind of dislike about, about his show. It's like people go on there and they and they dog him and dog him and dog him, but they steady see watch him, they steady get mad at him, but it's his opinion. You know, it is what it is. I just don't like the fact that he throw his opinion out there. Maybe so. I don't like the fact that people grasp onto it and get mad. It's not him personally. It's the fact that how people react to it. Huh? Those those individuals are are, are unhappy. Those individuals are um they're unhappy and they just need something to be to to be mad at. That's that's basically how I look at it. That's just like how these people became. How these people became relationship gurus. I ain't mm. never one of these went, went to school for none of this shit. No, self proclaimed. They, just, they, just, they probably just read a book or they talk to their homeboy and say, hey, dog, you need to do this. And their homeboy, like, hey, man, that's some good advice. You need to do a podcast. Bam. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Anthony, you care to put your two cents in? Because you kind of quiet. You usually have a lot to say. Oh no, I'm, I'm he was taking putting on it all in. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, I'm I, I hear it. I mean, I got my own everything seems to be based on 
how many zeros and commas you got in your bank account. You know, and as me being single, that's where, you know, I kind of, I look at it because it's just like, we all, like you said, we all have our, our mindset on what it is that an individual brings to the table. I work, like I told somebody right now, and I'm completely happy with this. This is the first time in my life I've only had one job. And it's given me, personally, I'm grateful for that because it's given me a chance to actually rest my body. I referee with basketball and football, and football keeps me busy. And I'm running up and down the field <clears throat> all from Friday night to Sunday night. I referee maybe anywhere between 18 to 20 games a weekend from Friday to Sunday night. So my body's not hurting. And I've lost a lot of money because of the, the whole COVID situation. But yet, I've had the chance to rest my body, spend more time with my kids, and pick up new hobbies that have that are making me money. So I don't have to depend on a lot of things. And me, me particularly, when I say, and I'm bringing Mitch me depending, is <clears throat> I don't have to, I, I'm not that I have, but I don't have to depend on a woman. So what you bring to the, uh, the table as far as finances, I can care less about because I'm going to go out and get my own. I'm not going to wait on nobody. And if you looking at what I can do for you financially, that to me, it says that you're not capable. So I shouldn't have to match you dollar for dollar or whatever it is in a sense. That's how I feel. If I got to match you dollar for dollar, I feel that that rela relationship is built on the value in my work, according to B of A, Chase, and Wells Fargo. So if you're going to be with me, be with me the same reason I'm being with you because you're the person I care about. You're the person I love. And no matter what we want to do as a family, as a, you know, whatever it is, okay, well, this is the plan. I'm going to work X amount, of, uh, X amount of hours and we're going to take this money and put it into this account. You're going to take your money and put it into this account. Or if it's not going to be as they use the term Dutch, okay, we're going to do this. But I understand there's a sacrifice. If you want me to do this, I'm not going to be as available, readily available to you as you would like to, like me to. Because I'm going to be working for our trip. You know, there's many things that I could see wrong. But like these self-proclaimed gurus that, that we've, we've turned, deemed them, it's... It's just listening to what people have to say and bringing it to a culmination of, okay, I got all this information. Now let me put it back out there. Like Mr. Jackson, hmm. we, he's reinvented the wheel. I think was the messed up part about him is, is that he's taking upon himself to portray him as this. And, you know, when we know a little Duval came up with that black, what a little Duval? They came up with the black men don't cheat and you're wearing that shirt advertising is along with what you're you're talking about but you're a hypocrite for a person like myself i follow Derek jackson and i've watched many of his broadcasts and some of the, the things i agree with but i don't agree because you're bashing because you're not you, you wanted to make it seem like you've never done it but i also because of my upbringing, I think about this, the, the story of, uh, I forget the lady, name. they brought the lady to Jesus, and Jesus said, well, whoever's without sin, go ahead and be the first one to cast a stone, and they all left. So I say that to say, a lot of us are like, ha, 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 because we told you, and then a lot of us are like, dang, he provided us hope for people like I think like Honey said, it was a, a black man who was portraying the value of his black wife. And that is one of the things I feel like as a um as us as a as a a culture as a color that we are the most self inflicting race on this planet where we, we do things to each other and like, oh well, you know, it's it's not fair, and it's like you know, we got to start looking back at ourselves and say, you know what, this is what I did wrong, and I'm 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 gonna fix me, and I I for one, I heard his apology, I didn't get that from him, 
I looked at it as a script. This is what we're going to do. Once again, the opportunity. Okay, I got caught. This is what's happening. And this is what That's exactly what it was. Yeah, and and, and is to me is is BS because me personally, how to say me and you, honey, we together, and I did you dirty. I don't care about what Mr. Randolph and what Miss Bates got to say or think. I don't have to get on national TV or national in worldwide web and explain this to people. You know, right. me, I'm going to value my marriage. Like I did when I was married, I did. Like I can say I turned down plenty of women and said, nope, I got a wife at home that I'm happy with and I'm not trying to mess that up. Then it got to I got a right. wife and I got a kid at home. I'm not about to mess that up because they mean a lot to me. And I okay, so quick question on you, by the way. Huh? <laughs> so quick question, because in that you mentioned and you said you happy because you have a wife at home, you had a kid at home. If you wasn't happy, mm -hmm. would that be in your path for you to step out? Okay. Yeah, you this, is, this is my thing. I would not. And the reason I would not is because for me, what I, I know of marriage from watching my parents, watching my best friends, their parents, we understand that that is a divine union. And I don't want to mess that up with God. It says any man that has a wife is a, a blessed man. And that's where I stand. I want to stay blessed. And I don't want anything to mess that up. I don't want anybody... Like, I'm not saying I'm not perfect. And sometimes, like, now, I kid you not, there's one person that I, I turned away when I was married. And if I knew my marriage was going in the way that it did, I was like, man, I would have done that. But yet, I did. I valued my marriage, you know? But it's just, it's it's the human side of me. You know, and, every, and I think that's what we all kind of forget about Derek Jackson. We have to remember, he's human. But also, Mr. Jackson, mm -hmm. I have to remember, you did all, you said, you bash niggas. You bash the brothers out here. Like, you were yes, you out sin. Like, I can, and with the way Jeremy Holloway is doing them, I want to hit Jeremy Holloway and be like, yo, put me in one of these little things. Because, yeah, bro, you, you, you gave us, you made us look like dirt. And you probably turned other people to the other side as far as interracial dating because it's like, you know what, hey, let me go do this. And because a woman ran into one bad apple, don't mean we all jacked up. I'm a good dude. You know? And I'm, oh, I just I'm thought about something. A, what's up? About it just dawned on me. Wasn't, wasn't it a room like a long time ago when he first came out that he was married to a white chick? Hmm. I don't know because the pic they just leaked the picture of him in college playing football. And the girl in the picture <laughs> yeah, is his one. wife. So I, I'm like you too. Like I remember something vaguely like there was a white chick in the picture. Yeah, them, yeah. them football stats was pretty bad. His, his football stats was true. <laughs> all them zeros, I wish they was at the end of my two dollars in my bank account. No, not in last two dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His, his football stats were trash. No, okay. correct. Hey, Black Sheep, correct that. He didn't have no stats. <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, it was, I read somebody in the comments said at least he was on the team. He could have been the water Damn boy I. and had more marks on his on his stats <laughs> if he was the water boy. He yeah, it, yeah, it was trash. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's cool. Like I mean, at the end of the day, to each his own. It, it's somebody for all of us out here, and it's just a matter of patience. Do you really that's believe what that? I think. You yeah. really believe that that's somebody I'm, for everybody? I'm gonna tell you why I believe this. Because one night, this is after my divorce, I'm driving down the street, and I'm all upset, and <laughs> I see two special needs people on the bus. She sitting in Goodbye. the lap of him. No, <laughs> no, 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 let me finish. no, 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 you come on. I got the time. I'm not, I'm not gonna do this with you tonight. Nah, just cut that story okay. tomorrow, Sunday. I'm not fooling with you, but right I, now it's Saturday. 
but tomorrow's Sunday. But okay, since you heard that, but at the end of the part when I saw them, I knew it was still hope for me because I'm a, like I said, I'm a good dude. I know how to take care of home. You know, okay, as cool I put it. Huh? Okay, cool business. Cool, cool business. I got you. I got you. Okay, so let me ask this question. Because Daryl must have forgot his question he was finna go in with before we actually hit live. But I'm asking ask this question. The fullness kicking in with him. What is or the, the difference? <laughs> right. What's the difference between Derek Jackson and a pastor on Sunday morning? The, the title. You took my hey, you took my thunder. I was coming for that. Ooh, we all coming it's, for that. It's the title. You gotta come with it. I gotta come with it. it's, it's the title. If you if if we following Pastor Keon and he telling us don't do this, do that. If you do this, you're gonna go to hell. But you're doing the same things that we're not doing. That you telling us. First of all, the, the devil made him do that. Okay, so y'all, hey, uh, the devil made him do that, and that's what that man, Pastor Wife, he's saying every time he fuck all these hoes and come back. And and she be you know going hard for him to paint for him, you know publicly, because the devil made him do that shit. So because I seen these memes that said if you know cheating, <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> See, don't laugh. You seen these memes that you know if the devil made me do it was a person, and they got there yeah. Jackson pictures. They get half his picture. Yeah. But Derek is. Allegedly, gave his life to Christ. We, who? Derek Jackson allegedly gave his life to Christ. I think they said it was around February. He gave his life to Christ. So that man to give his again. Hey. All right, stick it out. All right, no, y'all come. come so. On. First, like this, and this, and this is where me and and religion we go our separate ways. I can deal with an individual who is doing that, gets caught, and say, "Hey, I made a mistake. I'm I'm not perfect." Blah 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 blah. And keep moving and say, "I need to work on myself." Blah 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 blah. Because. I could look at it like, okay, he's in the same situation that I'm in. First of all, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to follow no man. You the pastor, but if you tell me to give, give you a thousand dollars, I'm going to look at you like you're smoking crack. But that's what I was saying. Then I could look at him like, okay, we're going through this. You muted yourself. Oh, I, that's what I get for touching shit. Um, I can rock with you because we're working on we're on the same journey. Now, the difference between Dexter and a pastor is nothing. It's nothing. It's the same thing. A pastor, the pulpit pimping, is the same thing that Dexter Jackson is doing. He sees a need. He sees there's a, a need for something, and he's praying on it. Same thing with a pastor. A church is supposed to be a fellowship for individuals who feel lost, who are trying to make themselves better, but you have individuals that are capitalizing on that because they see that need. That's just like a pimp back in the day. All right, you know dudes out there weren't getting that, so they had holes out there doing the thing, feeling the need. So my my thoughts on that is they're the same, it's the same, the same, same thing. They both had their following, they both had their 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 congregation <laughs> believe in every word they say come out their mouth instead of looking at looking at themselves and listening for things that have helped them better themselves and I, and that goes back to something we said earlier I think that was that was that was lost had no self-esteem felt like they didn't have nothing else to lose or well, nothing else yeah nothing else to lose so yeah. yeah, I keep going. Mm. Okay. 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 Um, Miss Daniels, what you got? Uh, about what? 
the difference between Derek Jackson and a pastor? I'm going to go with uh, with Cocoa Butter. It's just a title. I don't see a difference. Okay. So, normally pastors are men of the cloth. They are well, wait, wait. Elected when by God. That, girl, don't, 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 don't play with us tonight. I'm, don't do that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't Come do on. That. I think most of us have gone to church and been in church and know that a minister or a pastor is supposed to be, they they say they are called by God. They, they human. And humans they are. up in human life. They are. They are. And humans they human. can be opportunists. There's no difference between Derek Jackson and what's the John, the R- R- Bishop John, whoever is the cheating, the, the habitual cheater, Ooh. him. John There's no Gray. difference between those two people. John Gray. Just one, one, one has a a, a a um church title and the other one doesn't. There's no difference. Okay. Okay. Here's the Derek thing that's Jackson funny. Was cheating before, so is that pastor. Here's the thing, here's the thing when it comes to come to religion since we're gonna we're gonna go there we're gonna go there it even states in the bible that nobody perfect every disciple that god chose had issues so why would a pastor of a church think he's me it's like when you put trade of so a place that i'm without sin or i'm without fault you're saying that you're you are better than you have a Better selection process than God Himself, the person who or, ordains you. And I, I, yeah, but I know we get way on top of we talking about talking about relationship. Let, so, me, let me say this though. Let, let me let me say this real quick. As far as you know, the hype be- behind people, you know, being mad at Derrick Jackson, and the hype between the people being pissed off at the pastor for cheating. Um, and both of them, both of them being habitual, you know, I keep hearing, or my thoughts were, you you go to church and you listen to the word that the pastor preaches, his interpretation of the Bible that he's giving you, so you can understand. You don't go to church to mimic this man's um, everyday life. I mean, that's not reason. That's not why you go to church. But they hey, they hold, and pastors do too, hold themselves at a high regard. And people in the congregation hold them in such high regard, then get mad when they do human things, when they fuck up, when they cheat, when they lie, when they get caught, all this stuff like this. If you're gonna go to church, go to church and listen to the word. You ain't got you ain't you ain't got to remember what the pastor doing in his life. The first thing they say, you know, one without sin, cast first stone. This man is human. He he gonna lie, cheat, steal, whatever he's gonna do too. Forgive him and move the fuck on. That doesn't deny that he the words that he's been preaching all the time were right. Or giving you some pos- some positivity in your life, you know. That, that's what I want to say about the past. I mean, he human. I don't think I don't think it should be any negative, any more negative life on the pastors that do it than than Derrick Jackson that do it. That's that's all I want to say about that part. Okay. Yes, okay. Coco Butter. Oh no, you 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 hit it. I you covered it. That's why I just raised my hand. But then you, as soon as I raised my hand, you made my point. Like I. I don't know. Like, I feel that there shouldn't, and I know I'm going off topic, but touch on what you said. For me, my this is my problem with church. I don't need a man or or a woman to be politically correct to tell me what it is that God has provided for me. I don't. I've never dealt with a middleman. That's that's just me. I don't like dealing with a middleman. So my relationship to this is God wants to have a relationship with me. So why do I need Pastor Kennedy to be to tell me about what's going on in the book? I'm gonna go read it myself. I'll go talk to my dad. I'll go talk to my grandfather. But I don't have to go to Bishop Don Juan's church every Sunday to get a message that is in my mind tainted, you know? Because it's like, even though it is a title that they went to school to go get, hey, hey Benny, all right, in yourself, it's a, a title that, yes, black. Everybody don't go to. Everybody don't go to school for that. 
And you're okay, right, we're getting way more. far off, but that could be a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Yeah. It, it really yeah. would be for real. Right now, right now. Yeah, got, got that got that go to school to be a pastor. Because you know what? I'm yeah. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a minister and I went online and got both of mine. And I know it's a whole lot of people in I am that got theirs too. So uh you ain't got that, go. that was so high he can't even remember when he got his license. <laughs> so so. Yeah. So I mean, hey, I know some folks ain't went to school. I know some folks that signed up for this alleged school, never went and graduated. So everybody don't go to school. You you can get you can become an online minister. Don't make me shout out the people in the group that got one with me because we all a lot of us did it together. So yeah, I um, got mine. are you for real? I'm, I got look, mine. I got, I got like three deep. If I do a, if I do a post in I am and say where are all the ministers at? I'm Francine, Ebony, mm -hmm. Kevin. I think Kevin just sent me some time like he got his 30 day anniversary. It, it's a whole lot of us. I ain't gonna lie to you. But depending on what you do, it could be a side hustle because you having that paper. You're able to do marriages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a lot of people don't go to church. And it's a lot of people that don't want to go to church and don't want to go through that marriage counseling that a lot of people are requiring right now. I'm glad you said that because, like, since we're talking about relationships and relationship gurus and all that shit, um, why is it that people rather listen to somebody like that on how to build a relationship and be in a relationship versus actually going to get counsel from somebody to actually benefit from you not know, getting to know their partner, getting to understand their partner. Hell, you get to understand himself. I know I'm crazy as shit. So shit. Wow. <laughs> Took a whole bunch of counseling and figured that out. But I did it. I know people worse than me. I that, think that one, I think black people, just speaking about our community, you know, Watch your mouth, man. First of all, we don't go to therapy. We don't go to therapy for shit, number one. It's so taboo. And then when we do go, it is more so like a requirement to get married is marriage counseling. I think we need to normalize relationship counseling. First, first self counseling to fix your Amen. your personal problems. Then when you get in a <laughs> then when you get in a relationship, you come clear minded, knowing what you want, what you will and won't put up with. That way, you can set the bar for your standards, and you won't have women that's latching on to these online self proclaimed relationship gurus. Well, hallelujah, won't he do it? Hey, he's elbows is nice and shiny. Hold on, let me pass around I, this collection, honey, please. I do. Because I, 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 I regularly I go to therapy. Like I, I preach about that all the time. Like, yo, you gotta go. Like, just and, do and it. I'm it's with that. And we definitely, because me and Dura have talked before about we will have an episode on mental health. That that is a given and therapy because there's so many things in the black community that are taboo that you're just not supposed to speak about like things that the elders were not cool with doing talking about what's going on in your household um when something wrong with cousin in the back that they keep in the back room locked up because he need help versus getting help we gonna lock him up like there's so or rape. many or rape when you have a a, a pedophilia yeah, in your damn that, in your family you know the motherfucker yeah, yeah. is is touching you know your other family members yeah, but instead exactly. of turning his in whooping his yeah. ass you want to put you know hush and push it on the rug can i exactly. take a 30 second time out can i take a 30 second time out not salt on that when when i was like you said you want to do a 30 second time out i need i need a 30 second time out real quick Okay, okay. I mute. Question, I, got a, I got a question for Brother Randolph. I'm kind of off key, off oh. uh, topic, but I got a question for you. What okay. type of uh, shea butter do you use? I'm done. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna like the fucking No, no, 
Because his elbows are impressive. You know what? Yeah. You could have asked this in the god dang on group. No, you, I'm yeah. sorry. Really? Well, my phone about to die, so I got to get up. I'm not at home. Oh, I'm oh shit. Oh, I'm yeah. Okay. I'm okay. I'm gonna no, I what, kind of, what kind of black person, you know, travels without a charger? Let's talk about Look, that. I didn't hey, I'll send you where I get it from. It's scented, too. Like, they put different mm -hmm. colognes and, like, oil and stuff in there. So I got oh, one that's, okay. like, uh, one that's, like, Savage. One is uh, Gucci. Okay. And I got, I forgot. Yeah. Oh, that's so, what I'm I'll talking about. It. You know, because I done been nicknamed Cocoa Butter and Shea Butter and... Uh, <laughs> I, I like I like team tier stuff. Yeah, yeah. you're good for yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, about I know I know we off topic right now, but how I got started is my first deployment, and um, that water in Iraq was so damn hard, like it was it was ridiculous. Like it was my face was cracking and shit. That's how dry yeah. it was. So yeah. I started, and I go through damn lotion like it was going out of style. So a uh, female friend of mine said, gave me a little small bottle, like hey, try this shea butter. I'm like, what you have me around here? Shit, you cook with walk around with crystal on my face. <laughs> I started using it more and more. I was like, yeah, okay. And ever since then, I've been hooked on shape butter. And then I was like, I used to go online to this uh to this uh little African joint that did it in bulk. So they'll send you like like a uh 10 pound brick. Low. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a 10 pound brick for like $30. Like that. So hold you down for the year. Huh? And I said it hold you down for the year, huh? Yeah, yeah. I said I just, I literally the last brick I brought was in San Antonio. And I right before I came out here to Korea, I had finished it. I just You've been gone from San Antonio for what? Six or seven exactly. years? Exactly. Exactly. And not only me, but my son been using it too. And then so a friend of mine got me hooked on it, the uh, the scented kind, and it's just and it's just like you put on shea butter with uh with cologne in it, and it stays like that's scent. Thank you. I like. Oh, look at me. Oh, time is up. Oh, we get, okay. No, I was messing with honey. I was messing with oh, honey. Okay. All right. So let's uh, get back into the game. Thirty second timeout done. Okay. All right. So anybody got anybody got anything else? Well, but one question I want to ask. Do y'all believe, do y'all think that the reason that so many go to the, hang on to the words of gurus and everything is because we have little knowledge on relationships and love? I think it's validation. Like they've thought it and hear somebody that's respected. Say yep. it, it's like, oh, that's my that's my validation right there. And they're gonna yep. live by it. And now they're that's tuning right to everything they have to say to see if yep. they validate another stuff. Like I got ideas, I'm gonna tell you about this idea for my restaurant. And I'm like, man, this is something I'm gonna do. But then when I watch that, which is another thing you want to talk about therapy, watch I Am Athlete on YouTube where Brandon Marshall. Oh, that's my shit. That. Yeah. That's my shit. When I, when I heard Cam Newton preach on he, his piece opened that restaurant i'm like dude that's my idea i yep. have a choice and i'm about to do it so it's working you just got to know how to do but when you see these people that you admire you look up to that's that's your validation you hang on to that like i can go on and on about stuff that's just in my head that i don't want to take to my grave so i've already written it down i have three business uh what am i trying to say proposals that are sitting, getting out. So if anything does happen, my son gets old enough, he can take it like, look, this is what I'm going to do, according to my dad. All this stuff is written out, a business plan. So it's just, I think the main thing for them is validation. It is, for some of them, it's, it's, it's the pedestal that you put them on. So you put these people on so that, that they can be looking like, you know what? Like, these women that are upset with or hurt by a dairy doctor, we had you here and you, you failed us. So it's a pedestal. Yeah. That's what I look at. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. I, I agree. Okay. I, I agree. I think that's that's what nine times out of ten, and I, I hate to put it like this, anybody that has any type of um influence, yeah, that's that's what I can use. Influence on people is because they validate something that somebody else. that's just like that's anything from going to church all the way to relationships. And that's why folks hang on to these individuals because of because of that. Because they say they see it as in, oh, I'm feeling this way, and he explained why I'm feeling this way, or he mm-hmm. is justifying that it's okay to feel that. Way. And it's not a, a knock on until it becomes <coughs> weaponized. Weaponized it for monetary gain, and then it's it's that's when it gets dangerous because now not only are you you messing with their lives, but you mess with your life because if somebody God forbid somebody gets takes this really, really serious and now they don't fuck up their life and they turn around and start looking at you like, okay, you call them why I fucked up my life. Hence all these shootings and stuff going on. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's okay. I, I and and I can I can definitely see that. A lot of times we put our because stuff is relatable and you like, oh man. Yeah, I remember I went through that. You know, it's like have it's like not feeling like you're not alone in, in whatever mm-hmm. situation it is. So it's easy for you to go back to that person because they're speaking, um, you know, speaking words that you can relate to, a situation that you can relate to. Um right. I think we all can say that dating, relationships, love is not an easy area in life at all. <laughs> and it's not one dimensional. And that's I'm glad you said that too. And I was like, that's the thing that's that's interesting about this, about like relationship rules and everything. If you really just sit down and talk with somebody, you can figure out a lot of the shit that these people are saying. You can figure out what you like, what you don't like. You can figure out why you're feeling this way and all this shit. If you just talk to somebody, and instead of getting in that that. That bitches ain't shit, hoes ain't shit, dudes ain't shit. Group, and all you do is spit, um, oh with anger at each other. And versus sitting out like, yo, um, like I always say, that's probably why I have a lot of friends right now. Is because I'm always saying, like, when they start talking, man, hoes ain't shit, hoes ain't shit. I'm like, hold on, who's the common denominator in that? What are you mm-hmm. doing? Right. Like, and then the flip side of that is like you keep saying that, but you keep picking on. Maybe you need to go to a different grocery store. I think oh. Derek Jackson gave these women. Um, he kind of basically crippled them because a lot of the. And I'm just going off again yeah. a little bit that I've watched. Um, I think he made them enabler because there was no type of accountability on their part. Like you said, who is the common denominator? Why do you still keep dealing with and attracting the same type of man? It's almost like a pattern. Women don't like to see red flags. It's like they have their rose colored glasses on, you know, and this man is telling you, basically telling you what you want to hear based on all the stuff you have been through within these relationships. But what he's not doing is making you look at yourself. He's literally just telling them what they want to hear and blaming blaming the dude. That's why all the dudes were so pissed off at him. Make, I mean, if you're going to you don't put yourself on a platform, be be you know equal. Make these yeah. women take accountability. Same thing with Steve Harvey. That's why everybody was pissed off at Steve right. Harvey because he was like, "Hey, you doing this?" The same thing with with Kevin. Some of the shit he do is like he doing the same thing. But like I said, if everybody just sit down and talk and be like, "Yo." This is what I'm thinking. Instead of getting that click that agree with everything, find somebody yeah. that's going to challenge you. Like, find that friend that's going to call you on your shit versus, Fact. girl, you, you right. You so right. You're going you gonna to do that. You're going you gonna to do such and such. You need to do this. I want to be like, hold on, Charlie. Well, what have you done? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, what you bring to the table? What you got going on? And then I think, and Back to the, the part about the black community, we don't do that. And we, we have gotten so so indoctrinated, so brainwashed and on some bullshit about it's us against them. 
is niggas versus bitches that that is hard for us to discern or see what when you got something good because you all you looking for that oh they finna fuck up oh she finna do this she finna do that or oh he finna do that oh he hanging with his homeboy oh he out there fucking his own bitches and he can be out there chilling with his homeboys just like they'll look up something good because they're not used to it that there go there go there and, that, and, and why? And then that goes back to the question of why? Because they're not why? used to it. If you oh, used that's to what, eat, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Why yeah. are they not used to it? Like it, it's not. This is this is not something where you wake up in the in one morning like damn I'm not used to this. No, it's it's <laughs> over time. Like because no, you learn what you're it's not gonna be like that. It kind of be. Like no, it's it's a learned behavior. It's a learned uh, behavior. Uh, uh. It's, it's a lot of behavior, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, now it's, it has a lot to do with social. I say part of it's social media, part of it upbringing. Um, because listen, let's be let's be real. Uh, what what they say the stat was like seventy five percent, seventy five percent of uh, black families are single parent homes, stuff like that. So we really haven't, we really haven't. Seeing a true, functional, and uh, positive relationship, and then if you you get the the, the angry, I've, I've seen uh, positive relationships my whole life. I mean, I and I can say that too. I've seen positive relationships. They may not have been at have. home, but my my grandmother and my their deceased now great grandmother and great grandfather were married fifty plus years. Like. That they don't count. That don't count right there. Definitely, like with it. And that's what I'm saying. And that's what I'm saying. Relationship say. that I saw. Granted, like I clearly said at first, I didn't see it in my home, but that was a relationship <laughs> that I saw from childhood to growing up to literally to death did them part, because that really was what it was. So, and that was something that positive that I've seen. But that was well, my grandparents. I'm saying, I'm saying that don't count because of the world's thought process, you know, back then. I mean, if you even bring it further, look at the 1970s. Take Better Right, for example. Her statements were, I'd rather have a piece of man than have no man at all. Yeah, no, no. Exactly. No. So I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I can't go with, you know, look at my grandparents or great grandparents because it was a different time, a different thought process True. than that. The reason I was saying to Dario is like I've seen positive, and you're right, your upbringing has a lot to do with it. But I think social yes. media has a bigger, plays a much bigger part, you know, in it nowadays than your upbringing. Hmm. Social media will have you thinking people are out your lead, you know, not in your caliber. They don't. That's not the caliber of person. Because what do people post? especially women and some men, they post pictures of themselves all day with filters. All <laughs> day. They post pictures of them being on, you know, acting like they on vacation or being on vacation all the time. Meanwhile, <laughs> shit, they house in foreclosure. They car just got repossessed, you know. But uh, it's, it's basically it's, giving them a show. It's a front. Yeah. Right. It's a front. And like, 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 somebody said a while back, when uh when social media first came out started getting big like with facebook and everything and folks would be on like oh they living their best life i said that's just a snapshot that's a moment in time that's not the whole picture you just getting a snap of what's going on and so but, yeah well, it's, it's crazy can y'all see yeah, me mm -mm. we see your hands see your hand. like this. Mm. there you go no, now you big head self go all right, all right. Shut up. yay I know. I just kind of like left the. I, I, the I, I honestly, honestly think that as far as us as a community, we need to. Did you hit your mute? Because you went, you got quiet, or is it your internet? Yeah, there you go. We heard the me, because you 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 faded out right there for a minute. You got quiet. Because shit, I'm in Korea, man. I'm no telling. I know. I know you. I got that Cracker Jack internet over there. <laughs> so, um, 
Shit, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, mm-hmm. nah, we need to just, we just like as a community, we just need to talk more, like, and, like yeah. discuss, not argue, be able to discuss yeah. and talk about, and don't be afraid to. And that's one thing too. I, I had to learn being in the in the military, and I'm still learning. We cannot be afraid to not show our feelings in our emotions. Because that that's one, that's one of the things that's killing us. Before we got canceled and all that other stuff. Cancel, high blood pressure. You yeah. can't be afraid to do that. Because like, mm-hmm. we hold a lot in. You're right. Yeah, I yeah, we we hold a, whole, a lot in. Because we, we either don't want to hurt people's feelings, scared that you're going to lose somebody. So, or depending where you are, might be your job. So, we hold a lot in, and then that's where them health problems come in, and all the other. Because we don't have a release, so we, yeah. you go, you wake up, you wake up in the morning talking about I hate this fucking job, I hate this fucking job, and somebody piss you off, or I hate they getting on my nerves, and da 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 da, and then so it's just like a cup. You pour it in the day, pour a little bit in the day, a little bit in tomorrow, a little bit in the next day, all day. In a week, your cup full, and you and you still don't have nowhere to pour out. Huh? There was something circulating on social media where this guy made the comment that, you know, he don't ever show his emotion to his wife or tell, you know, his wife how he doing, you know, mentally or emotionally, because that's not what men do. And, and that's, that's, and that's part of the problem. problem. And that goes back to the black stigma mm-hmm. of a man is supposed mm-hmm. to be a man and he's not and, supposed to divulge <laughs> how he feels or that black and woman is supposed that. to be a Strong woman. So let me tell you, this is an analogy somebody told me when I was dealing with my my emotions. And I always that's why I got the nickname Hope because it gets to a point where I'll get so frustrated and angry, I'll just lash out. And when I lash out, it was nothing nice. It was nothing nice. I done thrown two people through windows, through doors, kicked in doors, all kinds of shit. So the analogy that God used when we were talking about it is he said, as a man, we are programmed to be the warrior. It's just in our body to be the warrior. So when we prepare for our day, we, we are literally preparing for war. Preparing to battle whatever this world has for us. Mm-hmm. Take off all that armor, take off all that all that stuff that, that we got that we got on from, from from battle and be vulnerable with our with our with our mates or with whoever we are, whoever we're with. The problem is that we have been so indoctrinated that if a man or uh, the head of the household shows weakness, then they're not fit to be the head of the household. Ah. If a person shows that they are vulnerable, that's a way that, that's something that can be used against them at a later date. And we have been sort of documented before. Behind this facade, behind this, oh, I'm straight, I'm straight, you know damn well, you like a little five-year-old kid inside the crime. Outside, you got that straight face like, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And, and it's and like I said, the only thing it's doing is it's killing us literally and figuratively. It's killing us one because, like I said, our health and everything. And two, we're coming so we're becoming so detached from reality, so detached from from what it is to be in communion with people that it makes it easy for us to to fall for for relationship groups. Because mm-hmm. that is our way of, that is our outlet. They're saying what we feel on the inside. They're saying what our women feel on the inside. Like, and it's like sometimes with, like with Kevin, some of the stuff that, a lot of the stuff that he says is bullshit, but a lot of dudes grab on to it because that's what they're saying on the inside. That's how they're feeling on the inside. That anger toward a woman is how they feel on the inside. It's not about the message, it's about the feeling, the, the delivery. So, yeah. and, and, and I think until we, until we deal with that, we don't continuously have these folks pop up. Oh, if you do this, if your man don't do this, then he ain't shit. Or if, if your girl saying this, this, and this, she ain't shit. You won't continue to have this, this spiral, that circle, and 
a rift between the black man and the black woman. Crackerjack internet. <laughs> we want that because we did not hear what you said. Yo, yeah. it is. But it looked like okay. it was good. No, I was saying it, it, it made me think like it seemed like we are the only ethnicity that is doing that. That's what it seemed like because being here, I'm seeing a lot of the, the roles of the household being defined. And it's defined to the point where it's even in the workplace. Like you may have a, a elderly woman with a young man, but because of their their uh, culture, the man has to dominate, and so she will still bow down to that man. And I'm just like, that's interesting. Oh, it, wow. it, yeah, even yeah, it's it's yeah, physically? it's crazy like that. Wait, physically I'm, bow? Is that bow? No. No, like no, no, no. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'll just make sure. Like that, I'm talking about like, like step back. Figuratively, yeah. 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 So, are you saying that we don't do that in the black community? Is that what you're saying? It's like a battle between. It's a. It seems like it's a battle between the the between man and woman. Like who have instead of working together and coming together and trying to figure out all right. How do we maneuver through this world, which everybody don't like them? It, like my personal opinion, I think we're a fetish for people who interracial date. But um, it, instead of figuring out how we can we as a couple relationship as a community move together, it's always all oh, the whole thing is this whole thing shit. I mean, we made songs about it, so it's like we're fighting each other amongst fighting everybody else. Instead of, instead of just being like, okay, so where does the whole analogy about how they live there correlate to us not in our community? Because I don't, I don't see, I don't see it in our community like that. As far as that's what I'm saying, it's like I see like we, from what I'm seeing, we are the only ones where we fight. We fight each so other. the woman Listen. fights the man basically and won't let him leave. Is that what you're saying? Not just leave, just like okay, a woman won't allow a man to be vulnerable, and if a man is vulnerable, the woman thinks he's weak. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see that. Like okay. something like yeah. So like and like I said, and what I mean by the culture here is like they allow that man to be the leader. First of all, women in America don't know what the fuck they want, especially black women. They don't know what they want. You know, they, they want a man, they stay on paper. They want a man to be sensitive and understanding. And, you know, in, in, but when you get a man that's emotional, that's, you know, um, mentally stable, you know, and understands who he is and what he wants, they look at that as being a pump. Oh, I don't want but him to be too soft. But, but you just said you that, wanted somebody that was sensitive. Now you got somebody that's sensitive. That's 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 what you want. That's 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 Society has said that, like, society has given us this. These are the ram- these are the parameters that we want as a black community, which is interesting. And a man has to be strong, like, cause think about it. Growing up, what do they always say? Boys don't cry. Yep, the boy don't cry. Shut that up. Dry that up. Boys don't cry. Oh, you gotta be uh, tough. Uh, uh, My baby uh, cry. Then, huh? My baby cry. Mine do because, too. Uh, no, because you understand. You understand that dynamic, but growing up, what did, that's all you heard. That's all My daddy heard. told me that too. Growing up, boys and don't cry, and I'd be like, "Pops, I'm not a boy." But you know even, like, stuff like that. even still, even as me being a female, my mother was like that. She was like, "What you crying for? Like you, you wasn't supposed to cry. I don't give a damn what the even damn near to ass whooping. You got to think back." You getting your ass just got your ass whooped. I didn't get whooped. I'm sorry. I and they telling you to shut that shit up and dry that up. They don't want to hear that. Could you just whoop like three layers okay. of skin off of me? Like, Man, what I'm, 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 to? Shit. If we're going to we go there, if we're going to go there, uh, we, we can go back to. to I can't time. correlate with that. I don't, I don't have any type of background information about uh, being beaten as a child. I didn't get whoopings. Um, I was well, a perfect child. 
now, no, no, no. Yes. We're gonna go I ahead and say that part. No. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get weapons, but okay. Oh, I was, you know, I was like the, the ideal child. You get if you read like textbook, you read out a textbook. Like I was like, you know, so I didn't get weapons. That was sorry. So now we know what happened. What? That's, I mean, that's why I'm like the awesomest person today because I didn't get whipping. I don't believe in all that. I didn't. You know, I asked my I, mom, did I get whippings? Nah. You wasn't yeah, a bad child. I, I, I've, I've been on that call before. So I cannot relate to that. Whip. I mean, I can understand it because I've seen it, but I can't personally relate to, you know, just being beaten. As a child, didn't tell them shut up and don't. Or, but I did. I did get don't cry. I mean, my dad would say like the whole verbiage, boys don't cry, and I'm just, to this day, I'm not a boy. I look like one. I dress like one, but I'm not a boy. And maybe, and maybe that's why I don't cry. I really don't show a whole lot of emotion. And that's, and that's what and that's what I'm saying. That's and we get that. We were told. Not to show emotion, and I, I, I get it because back in slavery times, if you showed emotion, that, that meant life or death or something like that. So it just, it just came through uh, the generation after generation. But at what, when are we gonna be like enough? Is, not, not saying, yeah, enough is enough, and really start looking at us as a people and start taking care of ourselves inside and out, and. Then it goes back to what I said earlier, like this, that will help prevent individuals from getting caught up with these the relationship rules who are just preying on the fact that folks are lost and they're looking for they're looking for answers. And they just give my answers, give them the saying what they want to do, versus yeah. telling them what they need to hear. Mm-hmm. So that I, I can definitely I can definitely agree with that. Um I definitely can agree with that. So that's what's up. So we have been on here like an hour and 17 minutes. <laughs> and, and, um, I mean, it's all good, but we keep veering off into some other topics a little bit that yeah, I definitely yeah. want to hit because it. I, I want to go there. Like real talk. In these, in these lives, I, def- I want to go there because it's all about what I've learned working on myself over the, the last year or whatever, there's so much dysfunction in life because of things that have not been spoken. The yes. little secret that was pushed in the closet in yep. the back of the closet and you find them later. Like mm-hmm. there's so much dysfunction. That's a lot, a lot where a lot of the anger comes from towards people grudges and it causes other and that's when it starts causing health issues and everything because it's like well we don't talk about that if you ask a question they're gonna cut you off because they don't want to talk about it but then it comes out with somebody on the end and it's normally when somebody's sick and on their deathbed Mm -hmm. and then they want to start spilling the damn beans and it's like, well, if you could have told me this when I asked you 10 years ago, I could possibly be in a better place because I could have started my healing already. I had those right. answers. So right now, that's, and I'm going to be truthfully honest, that's where I am. It's, I'm trying to uncover the things that's been, that's not spoken about and mental health and these family secrets and all this other stuff. That's where a lot of that crap lies at. But you can't heal unless you dig that stuff up. It may not feel good. It definitely may not feel good, but it's necessary. And I think that's a big chunk of holding us, even as black people, back. Because we just, it's a lot of unhealed black people. Mm-hmm. I so, I need to put I that mean, in the I, 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 Not just that. Yeah. Like, you got to think about it, too. Like, for our generation... We had the fucking crack epidemic. Like, yeah. Like, think about it. Like, look at look at the history of the United States. When has something like that ever happened outside of that time? Never. Yeah. It has impacted generations. Yeah. Of black people. The crack epidemic. And see, that's another topic. I need y'all to be writing these topics down. Matt, if we, like, we, we keep straying, man, write these topics down, man. 
Yeah, because I've been to this part of a relationship joint, and that's what I'm finna, that's what I'm finna tie it into. Like, okay, go ahead. It, 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 that's what I'm finna say, because like, if you think, look at the crack epidemic, it broke up families. It broke up like families, like fathers went to jail because they were trying to take care of their family by selling crack. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So as you move forward, you don't get to see that that that. The dynamics of a mother and a father. Now you got the mother being the mother and the father. So she's upset because of everything that's going on. So she's acting out. So now you are looking at her as a role model as far as how, well, either the type of woman you want to be or the type of woman that you're going to get. And nine times out of 10, it's like, oh, my mama was strong. She did all this for us and da 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 da. Oh, my daddy was a dope boy and blah, blah, blah. Or my mom was a trick or whatever. And so that's the type of people that they look for. So now you already have a skewed view on relationship. And then mm. add that to it. Add that mm-hmm. to the piece of every time you turn on the TV, what you see? White people. See, no, hold on. Oh. You see us in the scandal. Some type of cheating scandal. You'll see, you may see one or two white people in the cheating scandal, but it's quick. But let, like, like I say all the time, I am so thankful for, for Barack and Michelle. Because if he mm. came out, if he came out that he cheated on Michelle, they would still oh. be talking about it right now. Man. They would probably have it. First of all, Barack don't cheat. And that's what I'm saying. They would probably have an anniversary. Episode for that. My president, okay. So he, he gave us a, 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 he gave us hope. But outside of that, that's all he see. That's all he get fed. That's all they showing us. Real, real, what is it? Real, talking about of Atlanta, real housewives of Atlanta. Oh, that man. He sounds like a robot to me. Do the, yeah. Does he sound like he a robot like to you? Robot. Okay. Yep, he started after a minute. He did. Yo, I'm spitting the truth. Yo, it's because y'all have a time limit on y'all internet over there, and your shit running out. <laughs> you, might be, you might be telling the truth. See, you know. You might be telling the truth. They might be like, "Oh, you, you no, 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 you my cow. You like that, <laughs> like that. Yeah. You, you hogging up the internet. Everybody yeah. else trying to use it. I could miss the part, man. I could miss the part, man. But yo, um. That's 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 how I look. That's how I see it. Like this, we if we're gonna do something like now the time, especially with this generation, because if, if it doesn't happen now, it's never gonna happen. And why I say that is because a lot of our history, as far as black people, like everything that we're talking about, is gonna be lost after we after we leave the earth. Because we're looking at the kids and looking at. Looking at the kids like like my son and generation, they're they're they haven't been exposed to stuff that we haven't been exposed to. They haven't seen the stuff that we have that we have seen. They haven't had to endure the stuff that we endured because we endured it and we said, I did. I'm not gonna let my child go through what I went through. I'm not gonna allow my child to experience what I experienced. So they're not gonna understand. I knew he needed to reboot his internet. I was telling him I was gonna tell him I was technical. It, it, be raggedy. It, it was gapping yeah. and fading out and stuff. Yeah. I think he hit that point. But yeah. nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and end out because we had one that what his song died and now there is internet went cuckoo or right. uh, whatever else. So we're gonna end out. You got any closing remarks tonight? Write them topics down so next week we can go ahead and you know kind of because we 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 did a lot of straying tonight you know we did we, we kind of went left went right came back you know I I like to you know stay on topic it, you know yeah. sometimes when you're making a point it does go left and right and brings it back to your point but we went all over the place you know I you know so. I say we and and I agree. You know, first, first night, first run, and everybody's just like, "Oh, this connected to this," but this is connected. Yeah. To this. So we'll yeah. get our topics down and um, okay. and probably get us some some new victims for the next one and see who <laughs> we can bring on. Because I know um, 
I know I want to get Francine crazy behind on that. Oh that, that's, my god! I got a couple of topics that Fran, Fran, Please. Fran got a lot. Fran, Please. Fran, me on her stuff. Fran, Please Fran got me on stuff. that one. Fran got some stuff for your butt, and the mental health segment I definitely want her on because oh, yeah. of her involvement in the community right. and her having um, a lot of experience with dealing with folks <laughs> on different levels. So that's right. a few. Uh, I think I'm gonna open the door kind of on certain um, topics to maybe some people, and I am uh, on some stuff and pull some people. Um, well, definitely where they're comfortable and have some knowledge at. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. But um, uh, like I said, it, it, it you know it's it's good. It, it's it's all good. We are gonna make sure Durio charges internet because <laughs> I know I know we talked before about him being on the mental health segment with what he okay. does with his job and stuff. So um, that that in that. He just messaged me too, talking about man, what happened? Yo, where the internet? Um, right. but, like uh, on that, I think on that one, I think that may bigger be a bigger forum. And with what I've paid for, I know I can. I think I can have ten guests on here. So oh, wow, uh, okay, yeah, because I went ahead and paid for the for this for this service. So he has some more little unmedicated mentally, y'all. Okay. Most, most of y'all in the group. Mentally crazy. Hey, but, I am um probably the most sane person you you know actually. So okay, so on that note, we're gonna go ahead and end the Chronicles of the Black Sheep for tonight. Thank you for okay. anybody that view, viewed, and thank you for anybody that participated. When I write, I'm right. These are just facts. I'm sorry. These are these are complete facts. I got like scientific information to back all this. I'm saying just that this is not my opinion, people. These are straight facts. I'm spitting. Good night, folks. <laughs>